everyone and welcome to Super 3, Women in the Startup Ecosystem, a show that talks about the journey, challenges and path ahead for women entrepreneurs in the country. Here we shed light for women to realize that nothing less than sky is the limit for them in this emerging world of startups. And I'm your host for the day, Saravjeet Singh. Super 3, Women in the Startup Ecosystem is a show by Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade, which is a central government department under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India. Startup India is a flagship initiative intended to build a strong ecosystem for nurturing innovation and startups in the country that will drive sustainable economic growth and generate large-scale employment opportunities. The guest that we have with us today is an entrepreneur with extraordinary skills. She's a scientist by profession and by her startup, she's actively contributing to make India self-reliant in the space of biotechnology. So please welcome Dr. Fatima Benazir, CSO and the co-founder of Azuka Life Sciences. Hi Fatima, thank you so much for joining us today. The pleasure is mine, Saurabh. Nice to meet you. So Fatima, how has the journey from a scientist to an entrepreneur been, given that you have switched from safe bets to now risk and disruption? The journey has been amazing for me, although it has been a roller coaster ride with a lot of challenges. But I think um, our, uh, the transition from a scientist to an entrepreneur uh, has been very critical in changing my perspective towards a lot of uh, things. Say, for example, I had to do a lot of unlearning and relearning, drop my scientist ego, and really get to uh, solving problems. So it has been a very emotionally gratifying journey for me because I think for any scientist, right, uh, the greatest uh, joy is seeing their work translated into products and when that really touches lives it has been amazing uh, say for example our contribution in COVID-19 we really solved the cold chain uh, problem for uh, sample collection by having our RNA wrapper product launched at that point in time and within a short period of time I think uh, so it it is really very much uh, gratifying because I've moved from publishing papers to customer impact or a real impact and uh, probably also, uh, we used to chase grants and fundings for our research uh, to making uh, your own revenue. That has been something uh, really uh, pleasurable for me. That's great. So you have actually translated into a proper entrepreneur by now. Yeah. But you've still been part of the biotechnology space. And as you know that uh, biotechnology as a sector is relatively less explored in the startup ecosystem, right? What according to you are the growth aspects in this particular sector that given that it is not part of the mainstream sectors entrepreneurs usually go for? Yeah, uh, I think that's a good question. Uh, I would say that uh, biotechnology has been in play, uh, right? Even a lot of plant breeding companies like Monsanto have been in India for quite a number of uh, days. But however, I think uh, Indian biotech ecosystem as such from Indian founders has been more service oriented rather than product oriented uh, before COVID. However, thanks to COVID, I think uh, an entire ecosystem of biotech products and founders has come up and grown up. Uh, say, for example, we were a part of uh, uh, CCAMS Index program, that is Indigenous uh, Manufa Diagnostic Manufacturing Association. Uh, although it's funded by Rockefeller Foundation, but I think uh, we, uh, we are around 200 plus entrepreneurs in the biotech space creating products um, in India. So I think uh, we are really moving towards uh, a product ecosystem in biotech rather than uh, just a services uh, ecosystem or we are known for cheap uh, services or uh, contract research, right? Most of the biotech companies in India earlier have been contract research organizations. So I think uh, uh, we are really moving towards the Atmanirbhar Bharat in terms yeah. of uh, biotech products. Indeed, making it self-reliant. Yeah. So Fatima, before you were an entrepreneur, you've always been a scientist. While you were one, have you faced any situations where you were asked to perform those stereotype duties of a woman or not given the correct pedestal or equal opportunities? So any such instances from your life that you would like to share with us? I think I'm still a scientist at heart, okay? I'm still a scientist and I still enjoy doing lab work. Yeah. Just that uh, now my focus has moved from academic research to impact-based research. Okay. So that's the only difference that is there. Although I may be an entrepreneur, I prefer calling myself a scientist. Uh, in the work environment, probably I was lucky that I was not stereotyped. 
or maybe i didn't allow myself to be <laughs> Uh, uh, stereotyped in any aspect but however i think there are some life instances where right uh, your family says uh, maybe for women taking up a teaching job or a research job is a safe bet you can take you have enough time for the kids so it's much more better than uh, taking risks that has been something and another important aspect is that i have always been underestimated for my potential yeah so say for example it's like okay you probably have a good co-founder from business and that's why you could do it otherwise it wouldn't have been possible is something i always get underestimated for my potential and um, the other one that really pains me is when we took our products uh, to customers in india uh, i think they said we prefer only imported uh, german products right. or imported american products right uh, that's a typical stereotypical mindset where they believe that indians cannot build uh, premium products for the world and i think uh, that was something that was really painful um, uh, but however yeah uh, we thought then we will go uh we'll go to the us and come back <laughs> sell our own products as imported products but that's the sad state i wish it was not it so was not. but i think it's women like you who are not just scholars but actually now running businesses at this scale you're actually you know defining the status quo uh something that you've mentioned earlier in an interview where you know you were asked if given a chance to go back in time and do something differently it would be designing application based research right would you like to share more on that what it actually means for the audience yeah i think uh, that's what we call as beauty of hindsight right uh probably you know uh, as a scientist i personally had a huge scientist ego right you need to work on cutting edge uh, research you have to do uh, the amazing technologies like uh, genetic manipulation you have to do that uh, but what uh, this transition actually made me realize was unless an uncle uh, you solve somebody's problem in the most simplest way it has no value be it in terms of usage or uh, in terms of a business uh, proposition actually there's no value so that is when i understood that it's actually simplifying um cutting edge research uh, to solve grass grassroots level problems that really creates that impact uh, so that's what i said by redesigning or my perception change on how research uh, can be really focused towards solving grassroots level problems uh, i think i would have uh, created many more products by now that's what i feel uh, okay. we could have done so fatima how has the covid 19 period been for azuka did it increase the business did it hamper the business and how did it put pressure on the flow of work that you have had and how did you ensure the continuity besides ensuring the safety of all your employees and i also want to know about how has it been for you post covid yeah i think uh, although it was very disheartening and painful to see uh, the real pandemic crisis uh, panning out in india uh, i think for azuka it has been a boom yeah. uh, because uh, we didn't plan on getting into the diagnostic space for 3 to 4 years down the line and i think covid pushed us there uh, although with a lot of challenges right all the labs were closed you know that there was a lockdown and at that point in time we had a lab at indian institute of sciences and indian institute of sciences totally shut uh, closed the doors so we were sitting at home not, not knowing what to do and then <laughs> Uh, be, having been in this space from 2016 we've been talking about rt pcr we've been talking about pcr technology in india where people never understood what we were doing it was always a challenge i think um, uh, so this uh, uh, so covid really brought us uh, to the forefront and we became part of iisc's covid 19 response team and that is how we um, what i did was i used to visit uh, the viral research laboratory in victoria hospital right. at that point in time right uh, the indian ecosystem was not uh, uh, right for molecular diagnostics we were based on primarily on elisa based or uh, uh, biochemical uh, diagnostics um, so uh, i went uh, i went and uh, spoke to people there understood their challenges and one challenge that i found was probably shipping samples from tier 2 tier 3 cities and villages to uh, to uh, um, major cities like bangalore 
it required a cold chain and at times the, there was sample loss, sample integrity loss and uh, they were really struggling with this problem. So it was only then that we thought that we can really, uh, because we use a lot of such transport medium to store our own samples. Yeah. So we had our own formulations, then we thought that we will really repurpose uh, this and we quickly um, submitted it to ICMR and the approval was pretty fast and we were in the market say in four to six months. Yeah. You won't believe that uh, we scaled up from zero to one lakh units per month within 30 days time. That's so uh, it was actually a boon for us. However, we've had challenges, right? Uh, a lot of um, our teammates, families wouldn't send them to work. So we had a network in IAC, um, yeah. a, a WhatsApp and a Facebook network where we posted for volunteers. We got some volunteers who came and volunteered for us. We hired some unskilled laborers. Food was a big challenge because there were no shops open. And we were running three shifts and especially night shift food was a big challenge. And you wouldn't believe my daughter used to cook food for the night shift workers. <laughs> uh, so we had to do all these uh, kind of uh, jugad and uh, trying to help them with the uh, transportation, food, and ensuring uh, proper safety practices in the lab. And uh, SID, Society for Innovation and Development, um, uh, that is the um, innovation wing of IAC, helped us by getting us some um, CSR grants from Sili and Honeywell, whereby we could really afford a manufacturing unit at that point in time. So I think it's uh, great support from incubators uh, from uh, funding agencies and volunteers that actually helped us bring this product to the market. Fatima, now that Azuka is also into manufacturing and selling products, right? The angle of customers plays a very important role. How does Azuka define the process of customer acquisition? And to that, I also want you to address, like, does gender bias play any role amongst them? Or while vendors dealing with women, what is that like? Uh, that's a good question, uh, right? So I think, you know, because uh, you know that my co-founder Alex has some experience with uh, product deployments globally. Uh, so he brought that expertise where Azuka has always focused on a pull model rather than a push model. I'm happy to say that uh, customers contacted us because we were the only credible molecular transport medium vendor in India, which was China free. Okay, So customers usually contact us or the uh, crisis cell of IIC and we got a lot of customers at that point in time. And uh, similarly, I think India Mart li listings on India Mart and uh, CCAMP's index platform also brought us a lot of customers. Uh, I would say that, you know, our uh, customer acquisition spend and marketing spend has been 2% and uh, we could actually really establish the pull model uh, because I think uh, that's one thing Alex imbibed in us, right? Build great products, then the product wins. You don't have to push it. And uh, we've always worked with that ideology. And uh, talking to customers, right, I'm really happy that uh, I closed for, uh, one of the first few deals for uh, Azuka during COVID-19. In fact, I haven't faced any gender bias. Rather, it was an advantage for me, okay, because most of the customers uh, like to talk to the scientist and the product maker directly. Right. So, and kind of uh, because I have built the product, it also gives uh, sets an authoritative tone from my end on the conversation, which builds. Uh, which builds trust. Not only that, most of the time we get, we do get enquiries um, for uh, 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 for our products where the, they don't really have to use that. In such cases, I've, I've give, I give them genuine solutions. See, you don't have to buy our products. You could do this alternatively. So this has kind of helped in building the trust and uh, that's how we have our customers. But gender bias, no. Absolutely no. I would say it is a plus. Uh, so, Vadima, biotechnology is a domain that is relatively less explored by the startups. But what, according to you, are the growth aspects in this domain, considering it is a domain beyond the stereotyped mainstream sectors of entrepreneurship? Uh, I, I would uh, totally agree with the fact that biotechnology is not uh, is less explored. Yeah. I would say that biotechnology has been there in India with the Biocon being in the forefront, Serum Institute and a lot of uh, vaccine companies that are being in play. But however, most of uh, the focus has been, uh, earlier has been on services uh, uh, and uh, contract research services and a, a service-based uh, economy than a product-based economy. And uh, I 
think um, thanks to COVID, it has brought biotechnology now in the forefront, where uh, the ecosystem is now uh, growing to be a product ecosystem rather than a, a services ecosystem. However, uh, the challenges uh, of uh, uh, biotech uh, growing in the startup ecosystem primarily are because uh, access to funding is really challenging. We don't have those kind of investors who understand biotech primarily and that's why they are risk covers and they don't want to invest in something that they don't understand. So that's one um, roadblock um, for biotech startups uh, or for biotech uh, uh, product startups to really go beyond uh, uh, scaling up. Uh, say for example, uh, uh, right um, in the uh, developed countries, uh, biotech still is uh, considered to be a, a high growth, high potential domain, uh, unlike in India where uh, software as services or uh, e-commerce is uh, considered to be a very potential uh, growing domain. I think uh, uh, a change in the perception and mindset of the investors and ecosystem partners will really help in bringing biotechnology to the forefront because uh, biotechnology deals with lives, uh, human lives and everything around us that really matter to us. Even if there is going to be a war or uh, if there's going to be a famine, uh, we are not going to be totally dependent on e-commerce and software. What you need is uh, access to good health care and uh, food uh, primarily, which are the prime necessities. So I think biotech is something that could really uh, bring in that uh, change. And I think we have to bring in that focus to um, real technologies that are going to impact us directly. We've all heard that behind every successful man, there is a woman. But Fatima, if I were to put it the other way around, would you agree or disagree with me on that? I would agree more than 100% on it yeah. because I think that's how we've been working as a system and as um, social beings. I think each of our roles are indispensable for the other and I strongly believe in that. Uh, so uh, in my case, probably I'll uh, definitely want to quote my co-founder. Uh, Alex here, who's been my classmate and uh, friend from class 1 to 10 and used to always argue and fight when we were in school. However, having said that, I think he was the one who really motivated me and changed my perception towards what I was doing. So he, he told me, why are you burying your uh, lifelong effort in books? Why don't we do something of... Uh, impact. So uh, at that point in time, I had a typical academic mindset. I told him I don't have the money, I, I don't have the business acumen at all. So he really trusted me, right? Even when uh, a lot of people didn't trust me, uh, my, mo my mom used to feel I'm always studying and not making money. Okay, uh, What is the point in being a gold medalist when you are not able to uh, make money? I think when a lot of people couldn't trust uh, me, he uh, saw that uh, potential in me and he trusted me. So initially he invested saying that you try, I'll put in some money, you see how your work goes. And when it really progressed, he made that jump from software to biotechnology to help me with uh, business. And I think uh, uh, I've heard a lot of people say that you both are a, a super match because you complement each other's skills. While I take care of the technology, he takes care of the uh, business. And I think more than talking about a man's role or a, a woman's specific role here, I think it's the team's role. Uh, we don't accomplish anything individually. And I think a team is made up of all uh, different kinds of gender and it's the complementary skills that we bring in to really make something worthwhile and successful. I think uh, we have to move to the notion of a team, uh, even in family, I think, you know, what, a family is nothing but a team, right? Complementing each other's skill and working in um, sync with each other and uh, filling in when the other person is low, boosting each other's uh, morale when there are challenges. This is what happens and that's what happens in work also and I think it's this team effort which has all of us uh, that can really lead to a successful thing. So I perfectly agree that uh, you know uh, a man also has a significant role in women. So uh, we are not individual and isolated beings. And now we've come to the rapid fire round. Quick thoughts on the top of your head when I ask these things to you. Your best book? Glucose Revolution. Okay. Uh, your favorite author? 
Jesse in Chapse, the author of Glucose Revolution. Okay. She simplified science to layman words. Okay. Your best quote? It's always best to lose battles to win the war. That's interesting. Your favorite food? Peanut masala, okay. always. <laughs> nice. Your go-to pastime? Cooking, long drives and movies. Okay. The best advice we ever received? Um, every one of us has an inborn talent given to us and it's a sin if we are not using the talent and wasting it. That's actually a very good one. Fatima's role model, who would that be? My professor and mentor, Professor H.S. Savitri, right. a retired professor from Indian Institute of Sciences. She's one of the top virologists in India. Oh. A quality that you value the most in a person? Honesty and humility. That's interesting. And last, how would you like to be remembered? I'd like to be remembered as an Indian scientist who translated research into premium world-class products in the biotechnology space with a billion people impact. I'm sure that'll happen. Yeah, I'm, uh, I hope so. <laughs> but it's an effort worth trying. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Fatima, for sharing your remarkable journey with us. Thank you for joining us today. You're an inspiration to a lot of women who want to do something for themselves. Pleasure was mine, uh, Sarav. It's been great here and I really take this opportunity to thank all the support that we have received from Startup India, DVT, DST, our incubators, mentors and all our well-wishers who've been yeah. with us, uh, without which this wouldn't have been possible. Right. Uh, thank you all. And on that note, I, Sarojit Singh, would like to say goodbye. We'll be back with another interesting episode of Super 3, Women in the Startup Ecosystem. Powered by Startup India, DPIIT. Till then, dear ladies, keep dreaming, keep setting goals, and stay determined to achieve what you desire.